Welcome to our broadcast of today, November 3rd, 2024, Mr. and Mrs. Fixer. If you would like to have the bulletin with the scriptures of this morning, please go to the website vchurch.us or you can simply, you are watching on the comfort of your home, the big smart TV of yours, just put the camera of the phone toward the QR code and then hit download. My friend, thank you so much. It is our honor that we are broadcasting 24-7 through our website, through YouTube, and most of the time through Facebook, when they don't block us. <laughs> but obviously, we are here very happy doing our work. I remind you about our TV apps, Roku TV, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick TV, and Samsung TV. There you can install Gian TV and enjoy our Christian programs all the time. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not ruin the produce of your land, and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. Last week we talked about work ethics, and there is a very particular scripture that I have on the screen for you, Genesis 6.22. Now you tell me, what is the word that is missing there? Noah did what? God commanded him. The answer is, Noah did everything God commanded him. If you haven't watched that service, go to the website. Here's the QR code as well. As well. Work ethics. It's very important that you understand ethics work ethics for your life. Today we are going to be talking about Mr. and Mrs. Fixer. So what is the saying <laughs> that we have in America? If they ain't broken, why would you try to fix it? Well, but this is the thing. Honestly, what happens is that Mr. Fixer is always fixing things. You know, friends, Mr. Fixer is the kind of guy that if he's not fixing one thing, he's fixing other things. Because the truth is in our homes, in our workplaces, vehicles, equipment, shop, everywhere, there is always a necessity to fix something. Isn't that true? Now, the problem is, Mr. Fixer, if you are one of those guys, what kind of guys? Guys with the skills. <laughs> what kind of skills? Well, you know, the kind of guy that goes into the wilderness with a, a little hammer and builds you a shopping center. Guys with skills. <laughs> this is what happens. Your wife sometimes tells you, listen, I don't want you to fix anything. I just want you to listen to me. Isn't that true, my friend? But what about women? You know, there are girls that are very good by using tools. They are excellent doing that. So what is what the husband says? That, honey. What is what the family says to one of those girls that are very good in fixing problems? Oh, that is great. Of course, it's great. You know, friends, unfortunately, you see in the reality of life, that some people are just into fixing things all the time, resolving problems. I'm not just talking just about a hammer or any type of tools. It's the attitude. It's the response to situations. I can't help myself. I have to fix it, <laughs> right? Well, it's very nice to have people with that attitude in our families, in the workplace, you know, handymen, whatever. The problem is, sometimes people take advantage of that. 
Like in the case of many homes, like we see today, women that are very responsible, even more responsible than the, than the guys. And the family says, that is great. But imagine men supposedly being the ones responsible, supposedly being the ones that are strong, smart, the head of the family. And suddenly they just feel so comfortable, they just take a couple of steps back and they say, I want to see what she will do. Man, that is terrible. It's terrible. But on the other hand, remember, if you are a Mr. Fixer, sometimes, you know, what people need is not a solution. Sometimes, even if you think it's funny and weird, quite often what people want is just to be heard. Just listen to them. Because, after all, do we have to be fixing things all the time, friends? All the time. Fixing something, fixing something. It's like uh, magically somebody is responsible to resolve all the problems for everybody. You just need to wait for this person to come. He's going to do something about it. You just wait that she will know about this. She will do something about it. Today we are about to talk about Mr. and Mrs. Fixer. But in order to understand this, we have to go a little bit back into history. This scene that you see right now on the screen, it's an old movie. It's part of a, an old movie that shows some sort of king or emperor or whatever with a bunch of soldiers and the slaves. People that were taken into captivity by force, by weapons, and they were used to do work for free. And not just that they were abused, they also were exploited, also got hurt, and we know the any number of stories of women that being slaves were used also as sex machines, sex people. That is just terrible, my friend. Slavery is, is a reality of life. You know that. It happened. It happened and it's bad. It's a bad thing. And I'm, I, want, I want you to know that in the Bible we find stories related with the slavery. One of those stories is an A letter that the Apostle Paul wrote himself, the letter to Philemon. This guy actually was someone who had slaves. And I want you to read with me this particular section of this book, which only has one chapter. This letter of the Apostle Paul only has one chapter because it's a short letter. So we will, we will begin reading verses 15 and 16. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. And it says, Onesimus was separated from you for a short time. Maybe that happened so that you could have him back forever. Not to be just a slave but better than a slave, to be a dear brother. This is a classic situation, especially back in that day. You are talking about years 50, 60, after our Lord Jesus Christ. Even before then, for centuries, and after that, for many other centuries, we know the story of slavery. It is based on someone who wanted more and felt entitled to get more. Not just 
material stuff, not just the wealth of the land, as you know had happened <laughs> in Africa, here in America, in the U.S., in Latin America, also in the Caribbean. We know many stories about slavery in Australia, New Zealand, Asia. <laughs> what can I tell you? You know, China, North Korea, Russia. It's terrible. But the thing is, whomever was the person with the power, the political power, that also controlled the army, that person named Emperor, Tsar, King, Queen, what else? I don't even know the names of they, the titles they give to those individuals, prince, princess, <laughs> royalty, they say. Royalty, all right. How can you explain that individuals with power, with money, with the support of army, weapons, simply can just come to a place, control and dominate the people in that area, and then they are taking all the resources of that land, not just in the surface. I'm talking about minerals, mineral rights, oil, for example. All type of jewels, gold, silver, etc. So they, they use the cattle. They use all the wealth of those countries. And those people, they have governors. Eventually, they were kind of a independent republics. Not such a thing. Always under the dominion of someone, some kingdom somewhere. <laughs> Those people have the audacity to present a face to the public like they are majestic individuals with the proper outfit with crowns and jewelry with the uniforms some of those people today they wear military uniforms with several medals and all type of distinctions and they impose to everybody else in those places to bow before them and kind of worship them and obey them. Those individuals ruling those countries, empires, kingdoms, they even have sent people to battle, not just once, for centuries. And the soldiers go and they give their lives and even you can hear sometimes saying, for king and country. <laughs> king and country, all right. <laughs> it's just the abuse. While they are doing that, and of course, those people, those leaders that are horrible leaders, they have been, they are right now. They are in very sophisticated houses and palaces and castles and whatnot. They have plenty of money, plenty of resources, the clothes, of course, the whole nine yards, right? They claim to be the rulers of these areas, areas where there are people that don't have even access to clean water. Clean water to drink. They don't care. Those leaders, not just now, forever, they have been evil people and they will be 
evil people. They don't care for the community. They don't care for the average individual, for the average person. They love the idea of slavery. Yeah, they sl the slavery of those who are poor, many of them, they don't have education. They don't have access to good health. Fundamental knowledge. Because they think, now why? If they get an education, I will lose control. That is exactly how you have to see the cruelty of those people. That maybe you in the past have said, king such and such, queen such and such, emperor such and such. They are nothing. Even they claim to be Christians. How can they say that they are believers when they are part of this hypocrisy? Of this abuse? Of this injustice? We know countries in this moment, in Africa, Asia, in Latin America, people that are very, very poor, they are struggling to survive. And those people that they claim to be the leaders, monarchy, they say, they are not willing to do anything for real. To help those people. They will play games. This is what they have done. And they will do that forever. That is the big difference, you see, between those monarchies, even that they call republic monarchies, and the United States of America. Because here we do have strong leaders. We have in our country the freedom for anybody to get an education and be somebody. And we know anybody that does the right thing, goes through school, finds the right employment, and eventually is smart enough to create a business, this person can become very powerful. Do you want names? Well, I will give you names. Do you know the name Jeff Bezos? <laughs> Amazon. What about Elon Musk? Do you know that name? What about Bill Gates? All those guys and many women, they have been working, building their own empire, build, building their own cor all corporations. Somebody might say, well, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. Because people working there, they are being paid. The slaves don't get paid. <laughs> and after all, anybody working for a huge corporation has always the opportunity to find employment somewhere else and even start their own business. That is the big difference, you see. Our country, it is against slavery. But the the beginning of the United States is precisely believers in Europe, tired of the oppression of this monarchy. They come to this land, and as we know, there were many justices done, not by the believers, but those opportunist people that saw the potential of having a great life here in this part of the world, and they abuse the Native Americans, which is totally against what the Bible teaches us, to abuse people. Now, here we are, in the year 2024, here in America, anybody can find a paradise. If it does the right thing, if it, it works hard, and it's smart. This is the result of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our country reflects the greatness of God when we believe the Bible and do what the Bible says. As long as the citizens of the United States of America do what is 
right in the eyes of God, this country will continue prospering. The moment that the majority of the citizens go in the wrong direction, things are going to change drastically for the whole country. And eventually might happen. Today is not, to- not the day to talk about end times, but it has to do with that. How people that are blessed with freedom and opportunities to have a great life abuse that opportunity, cross the line of grace, and they become a disgrace of society. That is why Paul writes to this particular guy, telling him about Onesimus. Because the thing is, we read here in these verses 15 and 16, Onesimus was separated from you for a short time. Maybe that happened so that you could have him back forever, not to be just a slave, but better than a slave to be a brother. Something happened to Onesimus. I want you to know that sometimes circumstances come to you where you will be, you will be the one person fixing an issue between two people or more. This is the case of Paul. He didn't ask for this circumstance to happen. Suddenly he is there when he meets Onesimus. And I want you to know something, my friend. Everything that is happening in your life has a purpose. Whatever you are experiencing, it has a purpose in God. And quite often you don't even understand the problem. You just see the situation between two people or more people involved in a particular circumstance, you don't understand why you are there, but the Lord has a plan. (laughs) Listen to verse number 10. Paul says, I am asking you for my son Onesimus. He became my son while I was in prison. Now here is becoming more clear for us that there is a particular desire in the heart of Paul to fix an issue. So Mr. Fixer is starting to work here. He sees that there is an issue between Philemon and Onesimus. The interesting thing is, Paul was incarcerated at that point when Onesimus came to him. Why did Paul is in prison at that point for preaching the gospel? He was preaching the gospel and he was accused of many things, so they throw him in prison, in jail. But something happened between these two guys, Onesimus and Paul. That is what we call empathy. And you know how that works? works when you connect heart to heart with someone and everything begins when you listen. My Oh, my friend, let me tell you, if you really listen to people, if you really pay attention to the stories they are telling you, if you really listen to what they say, how are they feeling about certain things, what kind of problems they have, you will Show empathy because you are understanding. The thing is, somebody is opening his heart to you. You know how often that happens in the workplace, in the marketplace, in your neighborhood, with your family, with your friends, that somebody says something. If you are listening, you will start to understand why he is saying that, why she is saying that. One day I read this, which is to me very interesting. It's a teacher that says this. The kid that misbehaved the most in the classroom 
is the one who needs more love. How truthful is that? Because a child that is just giving trouble to everybody is just screaming, please somebody pay attention to me. Empathy begins when you learn to listen. Paul was there. And he was there in the prison. Onesimus shows up. And then they are talking. They are talking. In the verse 11, Paul says, You know what? This guy in the past was useless to you. But now he has become useful for both you and me. (laughs) Isn't it that so... Interesting, my friend, how someone, you, me, at some point we are useless. And suddenly, by the grace of God, the miracles happen, things happen, and we are changing. Because we all are changing. Some are changing to do bad things and others are changing to do good things. But we are changing And at some point, we were useless, and now we become useful. And Paul says, useful to you? Who is you? It's the same Philemon, the same guy who was the master of this slave Onesimus. But Onesimus is in the prison with Paul. How come he is useful there? But Paul says, but he is also useful for me. For me. Definitely. I want you to understand something important when it's about rebuilding or building. Whether it's a city, a house, a life, or a family, or a society. One brick at a time. Brick by brick, my fellow citizens. Brick by brick. But the truth is, rebuilding takes more time than building. And you know that. When there is a clean land, there is nothing there, you can start building. But when something is semi-destroyed, rebuilding is more difficult. But Paul found Onesimus there beat up. The question is, what is Onesimus doing in prison? Why was Onesimus in prison? How Paul knew about Philemon? And the slavery of Onesimus to Philemon. Some people say that there were tattoos. And the skin of slaves with the name of the master or who knows. Are they animals or what? Well, we see that particularly in areas like West Texas where we have cows. Cattle, they used to have a brand with the name of the ranch. This cow belongs to such and such ranch. There is the brand, the mark on the skin. History tells us that slavery and slaves were characters characterized by symbols of that kind. That's why... Think about this issue with tattoos, my friend. Just think about it for a second. What's the point? You know, regardless, there was communication between Onesimus and Paul. They were talking. Paul knew that Onesimus was messed up. So he knew there is a circumstance here that allowed, was allowed by the Lord God so I can help. Sometimes people just see the problem from the wrong angle. They say, but why are they telling me these things to me? It has nothing to do with me. I don't want to get involved. (laughs) Are you listening? I don't want to get involved. I'm sorry. What you are saying is that you don't care about anybody? Well, no, no, no. I care for people. As long as you don't have to do anything about it. No, no, no. I can give give them 10 bucks. Yeah, right. 
any circumstance around you is allowed by the Lord God. If for any reason someone is venting with you, is sharing with you certain things, personal things, you need to think about this story between Paul and Onesimus and remember thinking, maybe there is a reason why the Lord God wants me to hear this story. And then patiently, as you connect with this person heart to heart, you might be able to start rebuilding that life by example, by sharing some ideas, patiently, brick by brick. Verse 12 says, I'm sending him back to you, but it's as hard as losing part of myself. Now you can say, you can think, well, this is poetic. No, it's not poetic. It's not poetic, and I will tell you why. When you don't know what is to restore somebody, for you, this is poetic. But when you have the experience of taking somebody that is beat up, messed up, and you work in the restoration of this individual, you just don't want to let that person go. You want to keep it for yourself. Because you are thinking, I work so hard. In the workplace, for example, sometimes you hire somebody that knows very little about certain things, and then you train them, and you spend hours and hours, perhaps months and years, training somebody, and one day this person says, well, thank you, but I got to go. I have a better offer, a much better job. They pay me better, and it's where I wanted to be anyway. So thank you, and goodbye. It happens in, in many aspects. Romantically speaking, it happens. Sometimes you find somebody that is beat up, emotionally destroyed, with a very low self-esteem, but you saw the potential and then you work with all of your heart, restoring that individual, and now this person is pretty vibrant, full of life, and now this person looks at you like, I deserve better. And then they throw you to the curb. And you, they say, thank you, but I am out. Uh, it is, it's painful. That is what Paul is saying here. I work so hard on this guy, but I have to send it back to you. You know, my friend, a true mentor, a true father is willing to let kids go. A true mentor knows that. This is a temporary thing. My job is to work in the restoration of this individual and let him go. A father and mother knows my children are not going to be with me forever and they will take, me, take care of me for the rest of my life until I die. A true father and mother, although we like that, says, whatever is my child's future, in God's vision for my child, that is what I want for my child. Verse 17, Paul says, If you accept me as your friend, then accept Onesimus back. Welcome him like you will welcome me. <laughs> what we don't know is what really happened there between Onesimus and Philemon. But possibilities are that somebody one day saw Onesimus there working for Philemon. And told them, you know what? If you want, we can cut this change and you run and you will be free. And Onesimo said, oh, I like that. Maybe it was not the case. Perhaps it was somebody, a bad person that says, I can cut the change and you come with me. And we will do some other things, bad things. Regardless, the point is that Onesimo left Philemon's property, state. And eventually he was captured, captive, and put back in prison. So now there is a possibility. Paul is sending Onesimus back to Philemon, but he wants Philemon to receive him in a nice way. Now, you and I know that if somebody is asking you, please receive such and such and welcome him. Like you will welcome me. 
Basically, what you are saying is, I know he had done some things wrong, but you know what? Do it for me. <laughs> Do it for me, my friend. So something happened that upset Philemon. Something happened. But he was just appealing to his conscience. Basically, Paul was writing a letter of recommendation. Please, Philemon, receive him as if, I, if it was me. I want you to be nice to him, like if, I, if it's me. I will tell you something, my friend. Fixing things between two people or more people requires a great deal of tenderness, a great deal of humility. It requires that everyone will have a conscience. When you don't have a conscience about anything, you just do your thing. You know what is interesting? You start failing in life because you are doing your job. Probably you are a good dad or you are a good mom. You are a good employee or you are a great entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. But that is just work or things that you do. But when you lose conscience, you lose the connection heart to heart with others. And that actually separates you from the rest. That is exactly what happens between you and the Lord God. When you lose conscience of God, when you lose the spiritual value of having a great relationship with the Holy Spirit in your heart, you know, th there is a moment when you just simply disconnect. When you operate from your heart with the Lord God and with everybody, you become a very powerful person. Very powerful person. So verse 18, listen to this. If he has done any wrong to you or owes you anything, charge that to me. <laughs> Paul has some audacity here, but he knows why. He knows exactly what he's saying. Something that you and I don't know, but we can imagine. Something happened between Philemon and Paul. Something happened in Philemon's story that Paul knows. So he's using that in a very subtle way. He is very polite. He doesn't want to say much other than charge that to me. When you are dealing with people in general, are you sure about not forgiving others for their wrongdoings? In general. Many people say, you know what? What they did was wrong. Oof, let me tell you. There are stories after stories in the past, present, and future where people just go to the grave thinking, I can't forgive this person. I can't forgive those individuals. And there, at the very end of their lives, they go to this moment when they are about to face death and they think about the Lord God like the criminal on Calvary. Him and his acquaintance, the other guy, the other criminal, we're about to die with the Lord Jesus. But this guy said to the other guy, the other criminal, Amen. Jesus has done nothing wrong. We are here for a reason. Hey, don't do that. You don't fear God? So, Jesus, rem remember me when you come in your kingdom. You know, Story after story after story that you see in life. When the time comes for the person to die, when it's in that moment, the last minutes of their lives, you will see things happening. And one of those things happening is the confession of the wrongdoings, the confession of sins, 
and asking people, please forgive me. I don't want to have anything against anybody. And I forgive everybody. So why is it that some people are so persistent in holding things against others? It's a mistake. Verse 20, section A, Paul says, So, my brother, as a follower of the Lord, please do this favor for me. <laughs> so, Paul here is just putting it clear and simple. You know what? This is not about me. It's not about Onesimus. <laughs> this is about the Lord. So, in the eyes of God, do you think that you can forgive Onesimus, restore your relationship with him, and be nice to him, and have him not just as your slave, but as your brother. You know, my friend, the true believer always do the right thing. Sometimes we don't like it, especially when it's about forgiving, or letting it go. We don't like it. People offend us all the time. People disrespect us all the time, even in our homes. The lack of appreciation is pretty common. You do a lot of things and nobody says to you, thank you. You do the extra mile and nobody even mentions it. And you just wonder, what's the point? But you know what? The point is, we do the right thing. When we do the right thing, there is one true God that sees what we do. So Paul says in verse 21, I write this letter knowing that you will do what I ask and even more than I ask. At this point, Paul is absolutely confident that Philemon is going to receive Onesimus and embrace him. My friend, I have faith in my friends that they will please our Lord God. I have the faith that today, right now, you are going to please God. I have that faith. I do have that faith. I believe that the power of God is wonderful. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Bible, the power of the spiritual life in the Lord Jesus Christ. That anybody, you my friend, watching and listening, will say to yourself, Well, I guess I can be like Philemon, forgiving and accepting back whomever failed me. You know what is very interesting is the beginning of the letter that is directed to Philemon also is directed to other people. I want you to read with me. To Philemon, our dear friend and worker with us, also to our sister Aphia, to Archippus, who serves with us in the Lord's army and to the church that meets in your home. That is the introduction, the beginning of the letter. Talking about working with us. Isn't it that beautiful? Working together for God. But it's talking about two other individuals. A sister and a guy. We don't know about these guys ever again in the scripture. You don't find anything about these guys. But what we know is that the guy particularly served with us in the Lord's army. So, <laughs> my friend, there are people always around leaders. The leader in this thing, in this story, is Philemon, right? Paul talked to Philemon, reminded him about Onesimus, and presented his speech. So Philemon is there. But the interesting thing is Paul says, listen, I want you, Philemon, that you and this girl and this guy, you all read this because I want you all to be on the same page <laughs> with me. 
in every place, in every family, in every company, in every organization, there is people, there are people that are around the leader. It's not just the leader. A leader alone is nothing. A leader without people is nothing. But those that are around the leader, they must be in the same page. They must have the same heart. That's why Paul says, come on, guys, <laughs> I want you to be with me in the same page. And Paul says two things here that I want you to bring to your attention. One thing is that he says that those guys, particularly the guy, is part of the army of God. The church is the army of God on earth. We represent the Lord to fight, to fight with faith, to fight by doing what is right, to fight by speaking the words of God, to fight by loving people, forgiving people. You see, the army of God is not static, it's not stagnant, it's not just like, okay, yeah, we are the, the army of God, so, no. The army of God is going to fight. It's going to, to move forward. It's going to conquer. It's going to do something. It's not a bunch of losers. People in church cannot be a bunch of losers. Do we lose in life? I can say openly here, once I was a loser. Once I was a disaster. Maybe more than once. <laughs> So what? After all, who is free of sin? Throw the first stone. But the thing is, the power of God comes to us to change us, to make us different. From being losers to be part of the army of God. We probably have terrible experiences losing, making disasters out there. So what? It's life. We all failed. Paul wrote about it many times. But there is hope for us to be restored in the name of Jesus. You understand that. But on the other hand, the army of God is not a bunch of cry babies either. Yes, do we cry from time to time? Who doesn't cry when someone dies close to your heart? Who is not going to cry when loses the job or has terrible experiences financially and is broke? Yeah, we can cry. It's a human characteristic. But from crying once for something or twice for something else, to become a crybaby, that, my friend, is different. <laughs> People in church, people of the army of God, we are not a bunch of losers. We made mistakes, but not anymore. People in the church, in the army of God, yes, we have cried, but we are not crybabies. We all have to be in the same place. And you know what else Paul said here? The church that meets in his house. Boom. Do you know... That at the beginning of the church in the first century, they did not have Facebook. <laughs> did you know that they didn't have YouTube or websites? Did you know that Paul didn't have a podcast <laughs> or newsletter? <laughs> of course you know that. Okay, let's go a little bit farther on this. Did you know that back then there were not mega churches? People were meeting in homes. Churches were groups, like cells. Bunches of people, 10, 12, 15, how many they could fit in a house. That was the beginning of the church. And you know, it makes sense. And it makes sense because right there in a small group, you are going to see the reality of life. The struggles of the host. The struggle of the guests. And they do life together. 
Someone is sick, the others help. Someone needs food, they bring the food. They, they experience fellowship, camaraderie, friendship. I am totally okay with broadcasting. Well, hello. We have a channel, on a TV channel, a radio station broadcasting 24-7, non-stop. Of course, I believe in that. I know it's a good thing. But what I know is that everywhere people are watching or listening, that this voice in the air or these images on the screen of your device, this is not enough. This is excellent for you to get you engaged, to motivate you, to instruct you perhaps. And if you are a church leader somewhere, that you receive training and knowledge, all that is great. But it's not enough. You have to mingle. You have to visit with people like it was at the beginning of the church. Verse 22, also, please prepare a room for me, Paul says. I hope that God will answer your prayers <laughs> and that I will be able to come and see you. This is very funny to me because this, Paul is not saying, God will answer my prayer to come to see you. No, <laughs> he says, the Lord will answer your prayer that I will be able to come to see you. So now, Paul is kind of a, what can I say about this? I want to find the right way to say it, but kind of uh, showing off. <laughs> Paul is showing off like, and I know you want to see me, right? <laughs> but the truth is, Paul was saying, really, get ready for me because I will be checking on you. <laughs> that is what Paul is saying. My friend, a good leader, a good mentor has to pay visits to check on you. Don't get upset when your pastor, your local pastor your leader, your supervisor at work says, let's talk, let's see how are you doing. Always be aware of that guy who expects others to fix his problems. While you are doing life, there is always someone, that guy who is always expecting somebody is going to fix my problems, somebody is going to pay that bill, somebody is going to Fix that car, fix that door, fix that phone, work with my relationship with my wife, etc. Somebody's going to do it. Be aware of that guy. Be aware that sometimes you can help, sometimes you can't. And it's okay. My friend, maybe you are so willing to help, but you can't help all the time. The one who truly fixes everything is our Lord God. He is the true Mr. Fixer. But what is your job? Your job is to pray. You talk to him, you talk to the Lord, and you beg. You know what the Lord Jesus said? He told the story about someone that was in so much need. It was a widow. And persistently was talking to a judge. Please grant me justice. This judge was so mad at her. This judge was so tired and said, you know what? Give her whatever she wants. I can't stand this woman anymore. She is a pain in the back. <laughs> Let's give her what she wants. Just get rid of her. I can't stand her. The Lord Jesus said, listen, if this judge that is a bad guy did that for her, how much more the Lord God can do for you? He said it. Persist. Keep praying. Keep talking to the Lord. The solutions the Lord has for you are spiritual, my friends. You think, the solution is material. I need money. I need this car. I need this job. I need this. My friend, no. The thing is, the changes that are coming through you from inside out, when you get to know the Word of God, that is how you grow to the statue of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is how you change. 
is inside out. The more that you know the Word of God, the more that you know how He thinks, you become powerful inside. The Lord Jesus says something so beautiful. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that you can have peace in me. In this world, you will have troubles. But be brave. I have defeated the world. That's the bottom line. Nobody lives without problems. But if you follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, you will experience that peace in the Lord Jesus Christ by becoming brave and patient, knowing that the Lord Jesus has defeated the world. That's why today is your responsibility to take a step, a step of faith and say, you know what? I think I'm ready for this. I'm ready to surrender to God in the name of Jesus. John 3.16 God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not be lost but have eternal life. Open your heart and say, Lord God, forgive me, please. Change me. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, my friend. And according with the promise in Isaiah 53, 5, you are going to experience healing in your body as well. I'm so happy to see you here. I invite you for next Sunday. The topic will be world changers. And then on 17 of November, weak parents. We're going to talk about that. And November 24th, reinventing everything. I cannot wait to tell you what is that message all about. Thank you for being here with us today. The message was Mr. and Mrs. Fixer. So thank you. If you have a question, if you want me to speak about a topic, don't hesitate. The only thing you have to do is write an email. The email address is here. <laughs> Info at bchurch.us. Thank you, friends. Have a beautiful rest of your day. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of armies. My friend, thank you so much. It is our honor that we are broadcasting 24-7 through our website, through YouTube, and most of the time through Facebook, when they don't block us. <laughs> but obviously, we are here very happy doing our work. I remind you about our TV apps, Roku TV, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick TV, and Samsung TV. There you can install GN TV and enjoy our Christian programs all the time. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Gion TV app. With the Gion TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember Gion TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By Giancarlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied humiliated and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. 
Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are Even when I feel that I'm ready Ready to quit and give up Ready to throw the towel of my life away It is on those days when I realize How weak and fool I can be Considering my situation I cry out where are you, God? You promised me to be with me here all the time. You said that I will not be alone. You promised me that you will be with me no matter what, no matter what. And I know you are mine. Here with me all the time.
I beg you, I disappointed you quite many times. I failed, I messed up big time. Acting right was not my style. No more sad days, now all is bright The sun is shining with its light I feel the wind blowing off my skin I feel your love coming, you're my spring The winter is over, no more snow My heart you filled with your love Now in my home I hear the birds I see the kids playing Boys and girls Like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain, come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, how can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, sing to me a love song again, fly me on your airplane. Start tonight, I need you badly in my life. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past, I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me. Because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive. You make me fly. You are so right, you are my sorry night. 